let's go for the let's go for the thumbnail, right? So let's talk about a bit about Eric Griffin. <laughs> Uh, this Eric Griffin thing has been interesting to watch, right? He's been fucking trolled way better than I get trolled, to be fair. If if I'm gullible, you know, Eric Griffin is like, you know, gullible with a capital G, mate. He's on another level. So he somehow got flipping trolled into, you know, um, having to defend his wife for working at fucking target which is fucking dumb dumb right but you know his wife decided to go on instagram live and get a little bit chatty and she revealed that she works at target and then that then you know got a leg of its own then people started talking about it then it reached red bar and then red bar does what red bar does and fucking played him like an absolute fiddle and then here's fucking eric griffin defending his wife's right to have a job it's fucking horrendous because in the process he also inadvertently reveals that fucking rachel pays for the studio or something through target so bizarre so this is guy is meant to be like a world-renowned comic he's been on tv he's been on all the big podcasts as bread bar said he's friends with everybody right he's had the good fortune of essentially getting in on the comedy stand-up scene or even podcasting scene early before most people did and he still hasn't been able to put himself in a position where he can look after his partner or at least you know pay his own bills for his own studio but from what he said he kind of cuts himself off in a bit he basically revealed in a roundabout way that rachel's job pays for the studio or something like very very odd and bizarre kind of behavior but again nothing to be surprised about when it comes to these professional comics because they're essentially like adult babies really and they haven't really grown up they've all got peter pan syndrome but let's see um eric griffin defend his <laughs> defending his um his wife's right to have a job i think it might be this one actually is it this one no it's this one no, it's this one it's this one yeah it's this one my phone or my ipad so the universe is pretty connected i, I really uh, actually let me put the I thing really down love that so I can what's see going it. on i don't know what i want to talk about i don't normally like talking <laughs> about this kind of stuff but i just thought it was actually <laughs> he got played so it easily actually, it's actually kind of funny so i kind of want to talk about it stuff, Hold on. So, sorry it was... sorry you know you know he's being sassy and it's hurting his feelings right you know he's being <laughs> brandon she has to sleep with him and works at target yo red bar's ripping of him was so good what did red bar say he's like he was like oh um what did red bar say no, Red Bar basically said, oh, we thought you had money. That's why Rachel was with you. Now we find out you have no money and she has to work at Starbucks. Like, what the fuck is she with you for? Like, I was like, Jesus Christ, Red Bar, it's too much. Why is she with you if you have no money? <laughs> oh, Anyway, let's watch it. It's actually, it's actually kind of funny. So I kind of want to talk about it. So this bit is definitely, you know, when somebody's pretending like they're not affected and it's really hurting their feelings, this is definitely it. This is kind of funny. Like, I'm not really bothered about it. I would don't really want to talk about it, but, you know, you guys have made me do it. I don't really care. You know, that kind of stuff. This kind of stuff. But I just thought it was actually, it's actually kind of funny. funny. So I kind of want to talk <laughs> about it. Even though I know what you guys are going to say. Some of you guys could be like, Griffin, don't read comments. Forget the trolls. But this... Why does he always? Why do they always do this? Why do they when they read commenters voice when they read when they do an impersonation of a commenter they are always like a bit redacted? Why is it? Because if anything, doesn't that make it seem as if their fans are redacted? Then in a way, you know, the people watching you are your fans. The people commenting on it are your fans. But then your fans always get the uh, 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 treatment. So you're calling all your fans redacted. Is that what you're doing? To like, to what to cope and make yourself feel better about yourself, like weird. This is just a funny. It's just it's funny to me. So Rachel's watching TV a few weeks back, and she's watching some movie. Whose TV is she watching? That's the most important question. Whose TV is she watching? Your TV or her TV? <laughs> <laughs> Who pays for the TV? <laughs> honestly man i can't i can't believe it man i can't believe it 
this guy's got like anyway. This uh, no, let's just, let's just leave. Right. And I don't normally talk about this, but she talked about it. So I said, okay, fine. If you want to talk about it, we talk about it. You know. So she's watching a movie that she goes on Instagram and makes a video, and she says, on the video, on the movie she's watching, the girl works at Target. So Rachel, in her video, she's like, yeah, I relate to her because I work at Target. So I don't talk about this. And you're hearing Rachel try to describe the plot of the OC. <laughs> Yo, it's a good thing she was born with looks because fucking hell. <laughs> Bless that young lady, but like, oh, yeah, <laughs> it was a lot. <laughs> That's a lot, but Rachel works at Target. <laughs> she's worked at Target for years. Um, she's actually a visual. She's actually the visual <laughs> merchandiser. Why would you say this shit? Honestly, he got played so easily. Visual merchandiser. So she's a VM. We all know what VMs are, mate. Like we've all worked in stores. I've worked in stores. There was a period in time actually when you're like under the age of like 25 or maybe even 19 and you work at the first store there are there was a time when you looked at the visual merchandiser job as something to kind of like reach for it was like the pinnacle because those guys got to like come in kind of at their own hours they got to chat they got to kind of you know be re and do creative stuff on the window and whatnot on the merchandisers like you kind of felt jealous if you ever worked in a fashion store retail store whatever and you had a visual merchandiser come in or team you'd always feel a little bit jealous that you didn't have that job but then obviously once you get older and you start actually making some decent money or working a decent job you realize that a vm is not that far off from being a sales associate really and truly it's just a different type of a sales associate but it's not really that high up in any way shape or form um the actual the actual good role to have if you're in retail is being like an area manager that's when you can start making some really good money you can start traveling the world and stuff like i know certain people that i worked with in stores who started off as stockroom people and then worked their way up and became area managers of like huge department stores and they manage like europe they manage north america like they go to like conferences they go to meetings they have to fucking be in charge of you know choosing the fixtures and fittings for new stores like it gets crazy but if you're just a vm at one store you essentially it's nothing you know it's not too far from you know basically being a stockroom assistant it's not really that luxurious <laughs> but eric is trying to you know trying to jazz it up a little bit jesus christ man for one of the stores uh she always wanted to go into visual merchandising because it's <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dreams and aspirations does this woman have she's getting into retail at what what how old is she like fucking hell mate there's something that you do when you're young and have no money or if you have no skills and you just want to make money to pay rent you don't get into it as like a passion thing like this is so bizarre this is definitely the most la thing i've heard in my life <laughs> It's like when you're, a, it's like it's like fashion and art and that kind of thing. So then, you know, you're the she's art. <laughs> a target visual merchandiser is not artistic. Please stop. Please the one that like sets up the displays and puts things where they're supposed to go. And there's only one visual merchandiser for each store. Ooh, <laughs> how many managers do they have in each target store? Seventeen. Come on, man. This fucking guy. <laughs> this is you know what is funny though you know what is funny i wonder how the contrast works in the studio because brendan's got a wife that lives at home stay at home mum, doesn't work doesn't lift a finger to even try to work but is always dressed in designer clothes drives expensive cars and stuff and they have a million kids right so i wonder if you're eric griffin do you feel inadequate compared to brendan or are you proud that your wife has got a job I wonder what he's thinking is. Is his dream to eventually have his wife be like Brendan's wife? Stays at home and just, you know, and, 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 and acts pretty for, you know, and just is pretty for a living? Or does he want his wife to be like an executive or something? I wonder. You know, and then she's getting her experience at Target to, if she, if she wants to, to go <laughs> and do it at... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Walgreens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
trauma. <laughs> Where is she going to take this invaluable experience of doing visual merchandising for Target? The world is her oyster, right? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, man, this honestly reminds me of like my time in retail. I spent a long time in retail. I spent like five plus years in retail. I went from working part time on the weekends to working full time to becoming a fucking supervisor with the keys and shit and make, you know, writing people's rotors and approving people's holiday and being an actual fucking leader at a really young age, right? So I did all that shit. And I know what this whole shit is like. I know how like gassed up and full of shit people can be in that world. They love to fucking gas up their roles, make it seem like they're more than what they are. And they also <laughs> just like to, <laughs> they also just like to, just chat complete absolute shit it's it's weirdly enough a place for a lot of people who have peter pan syndrome if you don't really want to grow up retail is usually a good place to be to be fair because you meet a lot of people who are kind of figuring shit out they're passing by would you call them transient workers i wonder if they're transient but you know what i mean like a lot of people who are just like i don't know maybe you get fired from your your actual job and then you want to make some money on the side so you work retail for six months until you get another job you know what i mean so you have a lot of those people so um <laughs> trans workers <laughs> oh, she's an artist don't hate oh my god man other stores either like you know neiman marcus or some fa you know fancier brand or something like neiman marcus target and neiman marcus is a hell of a leap to be fair especially when you consider the brands that are sold in neiman marcus if i'm a neiman marcus at you know recruiter or fucking manager or something i'm not fucking looking for somebody who has a cv experience of working in target come on come on really Target VM is probably, to be a Target VM, you probably have to, you have to do is read a book. There's probably a folder you get given that tells you how to dress the mannequins. You can't do this, you can do that, you can do this, you can't do that. Like, what artistic stuff are you actually doing anyway? Like, what? <laughs> you style the slacks in a certain way. Like, what, what did she do? <laughs> you put the bucket hat on the kid backwards or upside down. Like, come on, man. Like... <laughs> on the kid mannequin <sighs> like that but you know target's a great store it's got great uh benefits and it's easy it's, <laughs> it's got great benefits <laughs> oh. <laughs> see look at that face yo rachel must really love this guy though to be fair of all the comedians that she could have had in terms of Callan, who's going to pay for your way, Brendan's going to pay your way. There's many communities out there who are going to, you know, who are going to ball out on their girls so that they can go on road and do what they want. And then you've got Eric here, you know, in front of his green screen, talking about the fucking benefits <laughs> and calling you an artist. She's a real Tracy Emin, right? <laughs> Fuck off. She enjoys doing it. Uh, she don't gotta do it. She do it. She don't gotta do it, really. So you could you could support Rachel on King and the Sting salary and this podcast, really. Press X for doubt on that one. If she wants to do it, you know. She wants her own money. Wants her own th thing, you know. So anyway, <laughs> it's funny. So then there's this troll who's like say his name say his name dude what why is your girl why do you have your girl working at target <laughs> the impression he does of other guys is fucking hilarious they always they always sound like giga chats right but he sounds so sophisticated <laughs> right and i just thought it was like and then he made some video or something like that and then like rachel saw it tagged her or something like that so she's we're, we're sitting on the couch laughing about it because she's like she's like oh so oh I, i'm not allowed to have my own career i'm not allowed to want to have my own profession and do what i want to do like what am i supposed to do and it's just like it's it's just that's such a, a weird mentality but that's that's what's out there in the universe you know you know what i mean so <laughs> 
<laughs> niggas talking about universe. He got tricked out of position so easily, man. So it's just funny that all that I've dealt with when it comes to Rachel on this on the podcast in the comments attacking me all the time. So first they're attacking me. These guys are so sensitive. It's unreal. And it's funny too because this is just one person. Redbar did this. One person. Most people love them together. I always leave him really nice comments about Rachel, nice comments about Eric. They love their relationship. They love how they come. Like if you go on his channel, I'm pretty sure the videos with him and Rachel are the ones that actually got the highest views. And the engagement, if you go through the comments, people love them together. So there's only one person out there, Red Bar, who decided to poke the hornet's nest and he's reacting like this. And acting as if like everybody's out again, everybody's out to get them. Everybody's rooting against them. Doesn't want him to succeed. Thinks he doesn't deserve her. It's like no, it's beyond. That's not even close to what's actually happening. You're just reading way too much into the hate and looking at that as representative of how everyone feels about you, and it's not the case. You guys are like, she's a gold digger. You know, that's that's the first thing they say. You know, they'll be like, oh man, you know, the only reason why she's with you, right? Even though. She's had a job <laughs> for a long ass time, you know. <laughs> Pays for a lot of like she's she's hey, you see, you for see, a look. long ass time, you know. Pays for a lot of like she's she's the one that gets all our, our like it doesn't matter what she uses. Oh, Eric, man, what are you doing? He inadvertently revealed that his <laughs> his wife pays for the studio, like. He can't even finance it himself off the whatever money he makes on AdSense or whatever. He has to fucking have his wife who works on 9 to 5 pay for that. Honestly, some of you guys out there are lucky. Some of you guys there are really lucky. If you kind of deal with white ladies who allow you to chase your dreams, right, while they work a 9 to 5 and you use that money that they work really hard for to pay for your microphones... <laughs> <laughs> and your green screens and cameras because i can't i don't have that luxury i really don't have that luxury some of the ladies i deal with they would not have that they would not have that in the slightest there's no way that they're going to accept me taking money out of their paycheck to pay for my hobbies and interests that is insane he is so flipping fortunate that he deals with somebody that clearly loves him to the point where she's willing to fucking fund his life while she works a fucking nine to five can you imagine how gruesome that must be god almighty uh, you know and again she don't gotta work i always tell her why is he trying to cope in life or of course she has to work you, you got a household you got you got to maintain the household you may be starting a family soon as well it's like of course she has to work come on don't lie if there's any nonsense at work you can just walk out of there so if you want <laughs> to leave leave now he's balling right now he's trying to floss now he's trying to stun <laughs> yeah those headphones <laughs> those headphones are definitely giving uh, i can get you whatever you want babe <laughs> you probably got them from target as well stop discounts <laughs> He gets his own card. He got scanned. Oh, fucking no, Eric, man. Oh, Jesus Christ. But if you don't, you know, keep it. And then, you know, anyways, my point is, it's just a mat. Like the lonely souls out there <laughs> that think it's an insult to ask me, hey, bro, why is your girl working at Target? Why do they have to be lonely souls? Why can't they just be people that are just curious to find out why you seem to be the one comedian in your own circle that has a partner who has to work? Isn't it a logical question to ask, especially considering how early he started and the fact that he's friends with everybody in the scene? Why is why is it that he's now in the stage of his career where he's incapable of looking after financially his partner? He doesn't have to answer the question, but people can ask the question, right? It's no one's business to begin with. You can say, go fuck yourself. It's not in your business. But also people, you know, have a right to ask the question. 
without be, it being mean spirited, without being, you know, trying to get under his skin, just generally wondering, like, how is it possible that you don't have the ability to do this full time and to look after somebody? What what's going on here? <laughs> because she likes making money. Because <laughs> she, you know, it's it's a. Uh... It's what she likes to do. So I'm just saying, like, all of y'all, you know, if any my of, the, of the two or three ladies that are watching the show, the show regularly, and I appreciate you guys, you know, don't let dudes like this make you feel like any which way. Whatever job you guys have, whatever, you know, people can disrespect it all they want. All it is is, like, if you have purpose, if you feel like you are – doing something worthwhile for yourself. Don't let anybody make you feel bad about it, you know? Because I, I don't feel bad about it. I don't didn't normally <laughs> yeah, sure. talk about it because it's like, you know, you don't want people walking around Target now like, oh, is that, is that, oh, shit, is that it? The fucking ego in this fucking guy. He thinks people are going to go to Target looking for his wife. That they're even going to recognize what she looks like in the sea of Caucasian people that work in these kind of places. She's going to stand out. Or that people care enough to go and search for which one she works at. The fucking hubris on this guy. Yeah, Eric, Eric Griffin's wife over there. Well, you know, it's like that becomes a situation. So it's one of the reasons. But the only reason why I talk about it now is because what now she talked are, about Are they it, moving you know? her? They're moving her to another fucking um, target like she's in witness protection. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta find another target safe house for her to work in. They, they've been inundated with too many demands. <laughs> Eric, man. So, and it's like no, no embarrassment at all. It's just more about like just being private, you know what I mean. But anyways, I'm proud of my my lady. You know, if that's what she wants to do, I support her in her journey. So, slay motherfucker but to be fair to be fair there's nothing wrong with her working in target we know this um if i had to choose i'd much rather have my partner do what his his wife is doing working at target than have brendan shaw's wife because brendan shaw's wife like that's a lot to deal with in what in some ways brendan shaw's wife is a bit motivational because she's got such expensive taste it's gonna drive you to keep hustling to keep the lights on because you know she's she's got Birkins there's no way she's gonna accept having a coach bag do you know what I mean she rocks a Birkin as like a normal ready to you know everyday bag she's not gonna go down to coach she drives Lamborghini trucks she's not gonna be okay with a Prius so maybe having a girl like that keeps you grounding you know keeps you hustling but but it's also it's a nightmare in itself you know what I mean it's also a huge nightmare in itself but which is why I say I probably would prefer, you know, somebody that did work at Target over someone that just stayed at home and just chilled because that would be an absolute nightmare, an absolute nightmare, <laughs> to be fair. But yeah, big up Eric Griffin, I guess. He's holding down the fort and trying to be a good, good husband.